Hey, check this out. We've just arrived on the south coast near Albany in Western Australia. And have a look at this view. It's spectacular and it's a good thing the cows are friendly. <laughs> it's a world-class view and we've just scored the best day in the world to be here. Have a look at this weather. We're going to be spending a couple of days down here talking to the farmers and the fishermen about what they've been bringing in from the land and the ocean. And what opportunities they've been creating for themselves in terms of value-adding ventures, new business, whatever it is they've been creating. So let's go and have a look. Let's go and see what the fishermen are bringing in from the ocean. There's a couple of crab boats fishing down here and they're mainly going for the king crabs and the spiny crabs and also the beautiful big southern crayfish that are caught down here. They're mainly exported straight into the Asian markets because so they love the big uh, crayfish because of the size of them and it brings them great prestige. It's been, I've really enjoyed it. It's very stimulating and it's interesting coming from a women's perspective talking to fishermen. The future for the seafood out of the ports down here is the diversity we have. We have the ocean, we have the crabs, crays, oysters, mussels, the tuna boats bringing in their product and plus all their by-products. And we also look at the land now as well. We look to the farmers with their rainbow trout and their marron and yabbies. And we also have such a diversity and it's such beautiful cold waters and it's the best in the world. We're on the coast of Albany looking at some of the magnificent seafood down in this part of the world. We've been down here for a couple of days meeting with the fishermen and looking at the kind of catch that they're bringing in. And we've got a celebrity chef with us today, <laughs> Mr Don Hansey, Big Don, and uh, he's going to be doing a cook-up with us to show you some of the seafood from this part of the world. So here's dinner. This is for later day for us. OK, awesome. OK, what you can do, though, is relax, take a bottle of uh, Great Southern wine, some lovely oysters. Fantastic. But before you go... Oh, superb. What we're going to do now is a Great Southern Seafood Hot Pot. OK, what we're doing is um, putting in the Blue Manor crabs into the wok, followed by some Albany mussels out of Oyster Harbour. In they go. Just move them around a little bit. Let me put a lid on that. Then while that's steaming, we'll do some sashimi. So what we do with the sashimi, we slice it very thin. Then we make up a soy wasabi mix. A little bit of soy in the bowl, a little bit of wasabi, very hot, so watch it. Stir, stir, stir. And then we dip the fresh fish from the Great Southern in the wasabi. That's a saddleback cod, one of the many, probably over 100 different varieties of fish found around the coast here. A lot of them superb for um, doing sashimi-like. OK, what we're going to do now is finish off the hot pot. Lovely splash of Great Southern wine and some tomato-based sauce. And just move them around a little bit. Some beautiful limes from Denmark. Pop a little bit of that in the pot. Here we go. And a little handful of spring onion. Now we'll let that steam for one more minute. Look at that. Juicy plump mussels, blue mana crabs. Great Southern Hot Pot. What you need to go to seafood is white wine. And here we are in the Great Southern, in one of the premier wine producing regions in Australia. And this vineyard, this is Gilbert's Vineyard. And these grapes, these grapevines here, grew the best award winning wine in Western Australia in the year 2000. This is a Riesling grapevine. And here we have the award winning farmer who produced the wine. So tell me, Bev, what was it like to win the award for the best wine in Western Australia? Well, it was fantastic. It was a great reward because it actually was our 10th vintage of wine in the bottle. We've been growing grapes for 15 years and after 15 years of working really hard, to win a trophy and the state's best trophy was just great. Fantastic. Yeah. So Bev, what's it mean for your business to be a wine producer? I mean, how important is the wine production for your farming business? Well, it's overtaking our other priorities on the property. Fifteen years ago, we came back to the family property. We're third generation. We came back with um, lots of energy and we decided to plant the vineyard. Now the vineyard runs alongside sheep production and fine wool production and we also have an orchard. We spend more time in the vines. We spend more time drinking the wine, but also it's giving us more economic um, gain. So Bev, you're, you've got three children, three boys, who are going to school. How, how important is being a wine producer to their role in the future in your business, in your farming operation? 
Well, one of the reasons why we planted the vines to, was to give them a future. We wanted to use our family property and develop it for the future for the next generation. So our children, they can go into any area of the viticulture industry if they want. They can become wine marketers, they can become vignerons. If they've got a science slant, they can become wine makers. They also meet lots of people. We have seller sales. Uh, we have a cash flow coming into the property. The cash flow enables us to um, value add and market our product all the way through. And hopefully our children, they meet lots of interesting people coming onto the property. So whereabouts in the world does your, do you export your wine to, Beth? Well, we export our wine into niche markets into Canada into Singapore and Malaysia, Hong Kong, and we just recently sent um, some wine into the United Kingdom. So, so tell me, Bev, uh, are wine producers like good wine? Do they get better with age? <laughs> I think I'm ageing quickly. This is a very intensive horticultural industry. But within this region, um, the viticulture industry is going from strength to strength. So, so Bev, what's your, what's your vision for this region? Well, the vision is I hope that the region will be known worldwide as the best and most pristine region to produce high quality food. That is just what nature can give. Mm. The best of nature. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Mm. So, and so what are you doing about that? Well, we've actually got a group of people together and we've formed what we call the Great Southern Region Marketing Group and we're bringing together producers and we're going to learn more about marketing, but we're going to take our product to the rest of Australia. First of all, the rest of the state of Western Australia, the rest of Australia, and then the rest of the world. And we're going to cross over industries, network together, and utilize the best of each industry and showcase it. Mm. We know we've got world-class product. All we have to do is believe in ourselves as producers now. So I think this group will do that. It'll yeah. bring the industries together. A bunch of producers and restaurateurs, it's not just producers, it's everybody, seeing the opportunities for the, um, for the region. I think the first benefit really at this stage is networking between producers. Well, regional branding is uh, quite a new concept to uh, most people in Western Australia, um, but it has wonderful potential to lift the uh, profile of the products produced from the region. Well, regional branding I think is terrific. It gives people within the uh, area an opportunity to market their product collectively and uh, I think it's going to be one of the, uh, certainly the growth areas in, within the agricultural community. I think we really have some exceptional products. I'm excited because it offers people an opportunity to exercise a whole, whole range of control over the marketing of their produce. Regional branding offers the seafood industry a tie up with the region as a whole. With, we have the vegetables, all the product, the agriculture and I can see it all working under the one umbrella. Well it's essential. Our Great Southern Region um, has a huge challenge in the distance that we're away from population and unless we work together and promote um, we won't be seen by the rest of the world. Regional cuisine is this great opportunity to bring the whole lot together, put it together on a plate so it's recognisable by people who want to eat it. It's signature dishes is really what it's all about. The food down here is really amazing. Yeah, you get access to the best, freshest produce that this region offers. We've got some great regional dishes that are starting to pull together. In fact, Don Hansey, who's a chef working with us in Progress Rural, he's actually pulling together a whole lot of that produce, and we'll talk to him. And uh, the fact that we can do daily deliveries, and uh, more and more recipes and chefs are latching onto the idea of uh, fresh mushrooms, particularly um, stuffed mushrooms, you know, particularly very fresh mushrooms. Mushrooms always engender sort of uh, pixies and elves. But at the end of the day, we are, we are basically producing a, a, a product that is quite mystical in its uh, cuisine, the way it's used. Touchwood is the name given to a fungus that rots timber. So we thought that was a, quite a good analogy with uh, growing fungus and, uh, and uh, touchwood as a name. We're only growing two varieties here, the Swiss brown mushroom and the ordinary white mushroom. I think the answer with mushroom growing is to make sure that they're fresh to the market. And that's why this farm is really geared towards only sending a little bit of produce to Perth and mainly to supply in the Great Southern. One of the things the Great Southern's famous for is its fresh produce. And here we are on the Willow Creek Strawberry Farm, one of the largest strawberry producers in the Albany region. Our strawberries go all over the place. They go to all the states of Australia. They go to uh, Southeast Asia, mainly Hong Kong and Singapore. They go to Europe and they go to America. And sometimes they go to the Middle East as well. And uh, how many strawberries do you grow on your farm? Like, what's your um, production? We grow, to, uh, getting up towards a million punnets a year. 
Um, and we've got 200,000 strawberry plants. So it's big operations. How many people do you employ? It must have a big impact in the region. Um, yes, we, we like to think that we're reasonably significant employers in the area. We employ up to 40 people a day when we're really busy. And even at fairly quiet times, we probably have about 20 people. And it's only for about six weeks in the winter that we really don't need any staff at all. So you've got a lot of strawberry pickers here, Jocelyn. So do they eat their fair share of strawberries as they go? Yes, I think they do. We never tell them they're not allowed to eat the strawberries. We let them eat as many as they want. Um, but I think that um, after a while, when they've been picking for a few weeks, they, do, they don't bother to eat anything like as many as they do when they first start. So when they start, it's a bit like, you know, one for me, one for Willow Creek, one for yes. me, one for Willow yes, Creek. <laughs> it is. And then they get to the end of the row and they think, oh, I haven't got very many in my tray, so I'm not going to be making very much money here. So I think they decide they'd better put a few more in the tray and a few less in their mouth. So what do you see as the future for um, gourmet horticultural produce like strawberries in this whole Great Southern region? I think the future is very good for gourmet niche marketing type produce. I don't know that, well maybe we could be really mainstream huge producers but I don't think that'll happen. I think we're more likely to fill niche markets of high quality produce. Right, so you aim to have your strawberries be the best strawberries you can get on the market? Absolutely. We always aim to be the best. Yeah, I'm great. sure we're not always the best but we do try. <laughs> So, Don, could this be the start of a regional regional cuisine for Great Southern? I think regional cuisine is already happening in, in the um, regions of Western Australia. What we've got is this wonderful food culture evolving in WA, where we're starting to celebrate the harvest of different foods. And one of them is the asparagus, another one's the mushrooms, and also we've got some beautiful trout that I'm going to simply barbecue. So, so really the South West is, a, is a, what I call a fruit bowl. There's, there's so much beautiful produce coming from all regions in, in Western Australia. And it's so simple and it's so fresh and it's so good. And um, most, most people around the world look for simplicity in their food, freshness and quality, and we've got that here. Um, as a chef, you deal with a lot of food producers and it's so, it's so nice to meet these people because they're actually out there on the land doing it. And, um, and, and to make a good product or produce a good product, it's, you just have to put a lot of energy into it and actually a lot of love. Yeah. And that's what it's about. And so the range is pretty stunning as well as the quality. So this is sort of the emerging regional dish, you reckon, for springtime down here? I think so. I think regional cuisine is taking what is grown natural and local and, and putting that together in a, in a simple way. And mm. really the foods are unique from the Great Southern um, and from other regions. The, the, the soil is different, the rainfall is different, the climate's different, um, and you just get these lovely, unique flavours. So this is it, regional cuisine at its best, taking the best of the region and uh, cooking it simply, matching it up with some beautiful Great Southern wines. That looks stunning. I'm ready to eat. We'll save some room, Mandy, because I'm going to cook you some of the best berries you've ever eaten. OK, Mandy, we have got here beautiful Great Southern strawberries. We've got blueberries, we've got raspberries. I'm doing the traditional um, Suzette style, so a little bit of butter, a little bit of Great Southern honey, choice honey. Curry flower honey. Exactly. And tangelos in from the orchard just behind us here. OK, look at that tangelo juice. Sweet as. Put a splash of Grand Marnier, eh? Here we go. We're going to flame that, burn the alcohol off. And then, mm -hmm. some of these little numbers here. Just throw them in. Pop them in. These are the Willow Creek strawberries, aren't they beautiful? Most of them go export, but after Christmas, these are what you'll get in the Perth markets. Mm. So sweet and juicy. Beautiful, absolutely. Look at that. Magnificent. Okay. So they go in the pan. So we've got the honey in there, strawberries in the pan, some of these lovely blueberries. Beautiful. Now look, that's looking good. What we need to do, reduce that a fraction and just gently cook that through. Then we're going to fold some of these little crates in. So we'll just heat mm. these little fellows up. We can pop another one in. One in there. We just want to warm their berries through. Chefs from Margaret River to Perth hang out to get these berries and the season is just hitting in. OK, some choice raspberries just to mix through here, pretty gently. Just want to put a little bit of warmth on them. Once again, the harvest is just happening with these and it goes through till about the end of um, sort of February, March. Great to eat. Um, look at that lovely colour. OK, it's eating time. Let's go. On go the crates. 
They smell delicious. Some lovely strawberries on top of that. Blueberries. Some of this lovely juice that's kind of gone all reduced down. So it's got the Denmark honey in, the blueberries, the raspberries, the strawberries. And what we're going to finish it with is some of that lovely honey ice cream. Wow. And to top it off, just one small berry. Magnificent.